Past midnight on May 10th, 2018, the Israeli military affirmed that Iranian forces stationed in Syrian territory attacked their nation. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Al-Quds Force fired no less than 20 rockets against Israeli positions on the western Golan Heights. According to several reports, four of the projectiles were destroyed by Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system, while the rest did not clear the border. In response, Israel launched the most extensive air campaign it had executed in Syria in more than four decades, a mission called Operation House of Cards. Remarkably, the operation saw the debut of a new fighter. While it should have been the U.S. that deployed the F-35 Lightning II for the first time, it was its Middle Eastern allies who operated the fighter in actual combat before its rightful owners. What's more, within two years, Israel would transform the advanced fighter into a version not even the Americans envisioned. The ultimate F-35. The Mighty One. House of Cards In early 2018, Israel had a simple purpose. To debilitate Iran's military presence in Syria. Hence, it deployed its fighter jets, which evaded several missiles and also dropped dozens of bombs on more than 50 Iranian targets throughout the country. The Israeli Air Force's raids focused on neutralizing intelligence centers, weapons depots, storage facilities, observation posts, and logistics centers of the Al-Quds Force in Syria. Evidently, they also targeted the rocket launcher that launched the initial attack. Still, an anonymous senior Air Force officer warned that the Iranians might still be in possession of surface-to-surface -surface missiles that could pose a threat to Israel. To make matters worse, the attack was carried out barely a day after the U.S. announced its withdrawal from the Iranian nuclear deal. Unafraid of U.S. retaliation, the Iranian forces might have indeed taken the opportunity to strike. Nevertheless, the attack prompted exhaustive retaliatory raids on the part of Israel. The clash was inevitable, for the tensions and threats between the Quds Force and Israel had been rising, leading to the confrontation. But while dozens of Syrian anti-aircraft missiles were fired at the Israeli fighter jets, they emerged unscathed. As the army stated the day after the encounter, quote, all of our planes returned home safely. Surprisingly, the statement referred not only to the F-15 and F-16 fleets, but also to the debuting F-35 stealth fighters, making Israel the first country to execute an operational attack with the new aircraft, even before the United States. The Mighty One In 2003, Israel became a security cooperation participant in the development of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. As a crucial part of its plans, the country planned to purchase over a hundred examples of innovative fighters. The country's marked interest in the F-35 caused concern among senior defense officials and aerospace analysts alike. But the Ministry of Defense was nonetheless resolved to acquire the fighter no matter the cost, as they could neutralize the threat of Russian missiles in Iran, not to mention the continuous threat of nuclear devices. Still, despite its promised 30 to 40 year lifespan, there was concern that the F-35A could be quickly overcome by the technological advancements of the next decade. Thus, the Middle Eastern nation was uncompromising in its requirements for the fighter. While it is common practice to create custom variants for export clients of jet fighters, especially those of the fourth generation, Lockheed Martin was adamant about allowing major country-specific modifications, despite the amount of money provided by foreign contributors. Still, Israel managed to negotiate an exception. The nation is deeply involved in enhancing the fighter beyond its current capabilities. As the only F-35 variant to be significantly tailored to a foreign buyer's specification, the F-35I Adir, or Mighty One, will feature unique systems developed by Israeli engineers and designers. It is also rumored that the new variant will be considerably more advanced than the original. Notably, the country participated in the development of the initial parts and systems for the F-35 as early as the 2010s, giving it more insight into the fighter. Upper Hand 
Although several air forces around the world have shown interest in upgrading and modifying the flight and ground-based logistics systems of the Lightning by asking for deeper access to the computer's source codes, Lockheed has not handed over full access to foreigners for more than commercial reasons. Remarkably, Tel Aviv was not an investor in the program, but did sign on with an initial order of 50 fighters and negotiated to manufacture billions of dollars worth of wings and helmet sets in the country, albeit with the aid of the U.S. military. Likewise, depot-level maintenance will not occur abroad, but rather at a facility operated by Israeli Aeronautics Industries. After an initial batch of regular F-35As, the country acquired actual F-35Is, custom-built to integrate its domestic hardware. The unique Israeli Mighty Ones will have a domestic C-4 program that will run on top of the original manufacturer's operating system. Furthermore, given the fighter's unmatched capability to gather data with its sensors and share it with friendly forces, Israel emphasized that compatibility with data links used by Israeli forces was a top priority. In its quest to locate hostile rocket launcher systems before they are launched, the enhanced capabilities of the Adir will give the Israeli military an upper hand. Otherwise, the gargantuan undertaking would be, as the anonymous officer depicted, quote, like searching for a needle in a haystack. In addition, the new system will enable the installation of Israel-built data links and avionic systems, including radar jamming pods. According to an Israeli Air Force official who spoke to Aviation Week, the advantages of the fighter's low radar cross-section will be, quote, good for five to ten years. After that, the nation's adversaries will develop countermeasures. Logistics The announcement of the Adir's operations was as much part of Israel's strategy as the actual deployment of the aircraft. It was not a coincidental choice to let potential adversaries, namely Iran, Syria, and Hezbollah, know that the fighters are capable of infiltrating the airspace of neighboring countries. Moreover, the stealth jets can launch an attack at any moment and remain undetected until the first bomb strikes its target. In the meantime, the Israeli forces had to coordinate with the U.S. and the Russians as well. Given that large numbers of Russian forces arrived in Syria in 2015, Israel has had to maneuver to ensure that both countries stay out of each other's way, a mechanism that allows them to keep the war-torn region under control. Regardless, the clashes with Iran could spread beyond the Syrian border into Lebanon, increasing the possibility that the Hezbollah terror group, backed by Iran, could also threaten Israel. Moreover, after the successful operation of 2018 and the debut of the F-35, the nation has not rested on its laurels. On the contrary, the anonymous Air Force official stated, quote, We are continuing to review the operation. Even when you have a successful operation, there is still a lot to review. Despite the success today, we are taking our enemy very seriously. Within that context, the heavily tailored F-35I renders an Israeli attack on Iran much more practical. But to make the raiding of Iranian key targets viable, the aircraft would have to fly through Turkey, Jordan, and Syria before overflying Iraq and reaching Iranian airspace. Hence, like most fourth-generation fighters, the F-35Is would require conspicuous aerial tankers. But it is expected that the Adir can conduct simulated strikes on Iran without needing mid-air refueling. As the Air Force officer affirmed, quote, I don't know what the situation will be going forward, but we are ready and prepared for any scenario. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the thumbs up button and don't hesitate to subscribe to Dark Tech and check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels where we delve into more military developments and classic battles of modern history. Stay tuned.